In this video, we're in Microsoft Excel. And we want to create some charts that combine the clustered and stacked chart structure. Unfortunately, there isn't an inbuilt chart type that will create this combined structure for you. Okay, let's start with this first example. Now, the key to success here is in the way you lay out your data. I actually have two sets of category labels, one for the area and one for the product. And you can see that reflected down here at the bottom of the chart. You'll also notice that the area category labels are on a separate row to the product category labels. So South, for example, is on a row of its own. I also have a blank row between the areas. Now, the reason for that is that I want to create equal space on either side of these columns within the area cluster. Okay, let's go ahead and try and make this chart. So I have the data already laid out for you. You can download this file and follow along if you want to. The first step is to select the data that you want to display in your chart. Now, initially, I don't want you to include the category labels and I don't want you to include the total. I'll show you later how to add the total. But for now, I'm just going to select the data for quarter one through to quarter four. Now, I go down as far as the last row of data, but I also include an extra row. I'll explain why that's important in a moment. Then you can go up to the insert tab on your ribbon, go to your column and bar chart button and select the stacked column chart type. Now, just to explain why I selected an extra row, that actually gives me this 16 here. And I've done that purely for aesthetic reasons. So we get an equal space on either side of our bars. Now I want to include the category labels at the bottom of my chart. So what I do with the chart selected is I go to the select data button. This is on the chart design tab. And over here, I can edit the horizontal category axis labels. So I click on this edit button and I select all of my category labels. And I want you to include that extra blank row. Now, if you look down on my chart, can you see I get an extra line here? Now that line may or may not appear in your chart, but if it does, the way to get rid of it is to select down to this placeholder row that I've created. So I'm gonna redefine my category axis range. And then if I click on this little button here, you can see it gets rid of that extra line. That is why I put placeholder down here. You can put whatever you like in that cell, but it prevents that line from appearing in your chart. Click on OK. Click on OK again, and we're done with that dialog box. A quick way to change the color scheme in your chart is on the chart design tab, go to the change color button. And for this example, I chose this color scheme here. I want to make the columns a little bit wider. If I select one of the columns, and then use the shortcut key control one on my keyboard that'll bring up the format data series task pane to widen the columns i just decrease the gap width i'll close that task pane down i'm going to make the chart a little bit bigger and scroll over a little bit i want to add some data labels to my columns so i go up to this chart elements button and i tick data labels. I want to format these data labels, make the font a little bit smaller. I'm going to click on the quarter four labels and just decrease the font size. I can then use the format painter to apply the same font size to the other data labels. If I double click on the format painter, I can then click on each of the data labels and it will change the size for me. Click back on the format painter to turn it off. Now these data labels here need to be white. So I'm on the home tab of my ribbon. I can change the font color there. I might do the same for quarter two as well. Now you may have noticed on my introductory example, I actually have overall totals above these columns. These totals have been pulled from this column here. 
to include the total column in our chart, I select the chart, go up to chart design, select data, and I need to add the total series. So what I do under legend entries series is click on this add button. Series name will be the total column heading. Series values, I'm going to delete what's currently in that box and then select that total column, including an extra cell at the bottom there. Click on OK, click on OK. So you can see the total series has been added to each of these columns. Now it doesn't look quite like this chart yet, but your first step would be to format and change the position of these data labels. So I'm gonna borrow the format from down here, Format Painter, and then apply the format to this data label. I'm also going to change the background color and the font color. Next, I want to change the position of the label so they move further down. So with the label still selected, Control-1. And under Label Position, I'm going to select Inside Base. Next step is to change the background color of the totals so that they are not visible. So if I select the totals, and I can go up to my Fill button here and say No Fill. If I click outside the chart, you can see that the total columns have disappeared, but I can still see the labels. I now need to change the maximum value on my vertical axis. To do that, all I need to do is select the vertical axis and go over to the Format Axis Task Pane. Now, if the Format Axis Task Pane isn't open, just use the shortcut key Control-1 to open it. And I'm on the Axis Options button up here. And the maximum value is going to be something like 250,000. I can then close down the Format Axis Task Pane. Because I have data labels, I don't really need the vertical axis. So with it selected, I can now press the Delete key on my keyboard. I could probably get rid of the grid lines as well. If I click on the grid lines and then press delete on my keyboard, it gets rid of them as well. Chart title. P1 and P2 sales by region. Okay, I'm done. Let's move on to the next example. So in this example, our totals are within rows. So in October, we had 1,090 tests for the P1 product and 789 passes. And you can see how that's shown down here in the chart. To make this chart, click anywhere in your data, go up to the Insert tab on your ribbon. In the Charts group, go up to your Insert Column or Bar Chart button and choose a Clustered Column chart. With the chart selected, on the Chart Design tab, click on Switch Row and Column, and now you have the months as the Category Access Labels. So you can see we have each of the series clustered on these month labels. But for example, we want to put the P1 passes column in front of the P1 test column. So how do we do that? Well, with the chart still selected, you want to go up to change chart type, go down to combo. And in this list, you need to make sure that every series is a clustered column. And then every series that isn't a total, so in our example, that's all the passes, need to go on the secondary axis. If I click on OK. Now, if you have a close look at the chart, you can see that something is wrong. Let's take the P2 passes column. What we should be seeing behind that column is the number of P2 tests, which is a higher value, obviously but it doesn't appear there. Now that's because these two vertical axes are on a different scale. The secondary axis goes up to 3,500 and the primary axis goes up to 4,500. Now we could manually change the scale of the secondary axis to match the primary axis. Let's see how we can do that. First step would be to double click on that secondary axis. That will bring up the format axis task pane and what I could do is type in a maximum value of 4,500, press enter 
And now you can see the P2 test series behind the P2 passes series. So that solution is fine if your data is static and it's never going to change or you're never going to reuse this sheet for different data. But if you want to future proof your spreadsheet, this is the method that you should use. First of all, you need to calculate the maximum value in your data. And we can use the max function to achieve that. Then with the chart selected, I need to add this data point to the chart. So I'm on the chart design tab and I go to select data. Under legend entries series, I click on add. Series name, I'll just call this max. Series value, delete what's currently in that box. And then I'm gonna select this cell here. Click on OK. Click on OK again. So you can see my data point here. Obviously, I don't want it to be a column. In fact, I don't want it to appear at all in my chart. Got that data point selected. I go to change chart type. Scroll down to the bottom here. Series name max. If I make it a line graph, because there's only one data point, it won't appear. And what I then want to do is make sure that it's added to the secondary axis. That will ensure that the secondary axis is always scaled to the maximum value in my data. Okay, I'm gonna make the chart slightly bigger. Now I can actually get rid of both of these axes. So if I select the primary axis, press delete on my keyboard, and I can do the same for the secondary axis. I think I'll also get rid of the grid lines. Let's deal with the legend next. I only really want three entries in the legend, one for each product. So if I select the legend, definitely don't want max. All I'm doing is pressing delete on my keyboard once I've selected the legend entry. And I'm gonna kind of color coordinate the different series here. So I want a light blue in front of the dark blue. I'll have a light gray front of the darker gray. P3 product series are format with a orange background and the number of tests with a lighter orange. I then want to display data labels. So I go up to the chart elements button, tick data labels and get rid of this data label here. This is for the max series. Then I want to put the data label for the number of passes a little bit further down the column so I'll do it first for the P1 passes. If I press Control 1 on my keyboard, that'll bring up the format data labels task pane, and I'll say inside end. And then I need to do exactly the same for the other labels. Let's just finish the chart off with the title. And we're done. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next video.